Hi, everybody. Good to be with you. I have prepared another presentation for everyone today. And on this one, I'm going to make special effort to go slowly. We're going to articulate the case. Uh, this case actually came from a friend of mine. I will not let his legacy die. I will not let his memory die. And I want to give credit to him for bringing this information out. And it was my job to continue the legacy, put this into a visual format so that everyone can kind of see what this thing actually was. And we're going to go through this case right now here. This is the base forward flying triangle ARV crash retrieval. To my knowledge, no one has ever talked about this within this field. So this will kind of be a, a world exclusive here. I'm going to move on to the next slide here so we can keep this going here. And uh, special note, Detailed information regarding this case originated from my good friend, Mark McCandlish, uh, via email to me dated 10-21-06. So it's been a while. It's been a while. Mark's original source was a medic who was personally involved in this highly classified ARV retrieval operation in May of 1989. So this was just after the Reagan administration and the beginning of the Bush senior administration. So that's the timeline that we're talking about here. Now, before we even begin, I want to hit you with the bullet items here so that you know exactly where and what was going on here. So again, base forward flying triangle, ARV crash retrieval. Number one, crash occurred during May of 1989 between May 1st and May 5th. That's the timeline. Crash site was located 6.7 miles southwest of Halley, East Germany. Three, equipment on site included two Black Hawk helicopters, one fully armed Apache helicopter, two technicians recovering equipment from the vehicle's cockpit, and one hovering large CH-53 Super Stallion helicopter. Four, one white two-foot diameter sphere was ejected from the craft upon impact and had the exterior texture similar to that of the vertical striations of a pumpkin or terracotta roof tile design. This was removed from the site by a single CH-53 helicopter connected to a 100-foot-long nylon tether and aluminum equipment box. So now you can kind of see the visual here. And we're going to go all go through all the pictures here, no doubt about it. I won't leave you stranded. Number five, craft measured approximately 22 feet long and had a crew of two. Six, the primary eyewitness was a medic who was assigned to this operation as a result of another mission in progress to recover U.S. assets behind German lines prior to the fall of the Berlin Wall. Number seven, critical components of the vehicle were retrieved using two gray-white panel trucks. Personnel on site included Navy SEALs and Army Rangers. And then number eight, any remaining evidence in the form of debris slash composite materials left over from the crash site was blown up and burned using incendiary grenades. That's how they clean this thing up here. Uh, I want to go through people in the chat here. Uh, Cole for sale online. Good to be with you. The Moons of Jupiter. Bobby McBride. His Highness. Uh, Bobby McBride. Great, great to be with all you. Uh, thank you for being with me here. So let's continue now. And we'll continue with this presentation here. So if you take a look at the map, it was 10 clicks southwest of Halle, Germany in East Germany. So if you look on the upper right, you've got Halle, Germany. And then if you go southwest, you'll see this white star that I put on here. That is the location of where all this went down. So this is kind of like top view looking down of the map here. And I'm going to go to the next slide. And this is the original sketch that I commissioned Mark McCandlish to do for me back in 2006 time frame. So this is courtesy of the estate of Mark McCandlish. And I'm going to go through this here. If you look at the center, that's what this craft looked like. Rough sketch by Mark. Now, this was a base forward flying triangle. This is not a tip forward or point forward. This is blunt end forward. Crew of two, a very low radar cross signature. It has faceted flat plate technology, almost identical to the F-117. Now, they were flying a nap of the earth mission. They got a little bit too low. They clipped the top of a pine tree and they crashed. And you'll notice on the bottom of this thing, there are three spheres that are 24 inches in diameter 
and there's clasps that hold these spheres in place, but these are free floating. They're not rigid, they're free floating. And when this thing augured in, one of these spheres popped out. And then during the retrieval operation, ground crew pushed this sphere into this box and it has some residual propulsion left with it. The box stood up on end by itself. And then they had a CH-53 Super Stallion fly it out with a nylon 100 foot cable. So in a nutshell, that's what we're talking about here. I'm gonna go to the next slide here. And now you see Mark's kind of a little bit more of a refined drawing. So this is top side view of the base forward ARV flying triangle, 24 feet long, 12 feet wide, drawing courtesy this estate of Mark McCandlish. Let's go to the next one here. Now this is a little bit cleaned up drawing that I put together. And again, take a look at this cockpit window framing here. So you've got pilot, you've got co-pilot, and these zigzag sawtooth uh, framing design is, is absolutely uh, specifically designed to reduce the radar cross signature. And I'm going to show you that a little bit later. Let's go on to the next slide. This is my little bit more refined drawing here, and you can see these clasps that hold these 24-inch diameter spheres in place. Now, these spheres had the consistency, the external consistency of a pineapple, a, a seashell, or a terracotta roof. You put those all together, and that's what these things look like here. And I'm going to move on to the next slide here. Now, this is the original crash site map that was done by Mark McCandlish. And there's a lot going on here. Again, courtesy of the estate of Mark McCandlish. want to give Mark credit for this. I'm going to break this down. So if you look in the dead center of this crash site map, you'll see a triangle. That's our bird here. That's what we're talking about. And you'll notice that the flight path is from the southeast to the northwest. That was the direction of the flight path. And then just aft and to the right of that triangle in the center, base forward triangle in the center, because this thing flew base forward, not point forward, you'll see treetop. That's where it clipped the top of the tree treetop and then crashed. Now, all of the dots and circles on this map are low shrubs and trees. There was also very tall grass and unmowed grass at this location. All of the stars that you see on this map are military personnel. Now, you've got the panel truck that Mark's blown up here. I want to point your attention to the upper left. Take a look at the road. And then you've got two trucks in a river. So what happened is once the military came on site and retrieved everything, like all of the composite material, the avionics, anything they can salvage, the major components were shipped away in two Mercedes panel trucks. And then at the end of the entire operation, they had a special team with incendiary grenades and they blew everything up. That's how this went down. Again, May 1989. Let's go to the next slide here. Now, take a look at these sawtooth frames on the canopy here. So, sawtooth canopy frame to reduce radar cross signature drawing by Mark McCandlish. This is identical to another aircraft that I'm sure everyone is familiar with here. You've seen this before. You have seen this before. Yeah, in the F-117. So, is that a, a belated designer leak of the contractor that was involved in building this base forward flying triangle. I'm not going to say a word. <laughs> I'm not going to say a word. Let's go to the next one here. Now, this is the unit patch that the military personnel involved in this operation. That's what they were. If you look on the upper left here, so you've got Ubre de Oppresso. That's Latin, over the oppressor. So it was a two arrows over a sword and then they had this latin inscription and then if you look over to the right you've got these concentric rings here and i'm going to go through just the center part of this so you have an alpha detachment you've got a mobile reaction force you've got a mic detachment and a delta de detachment and 150 men that's what was comprised within this retrieval operation now on the lower left mark's got some notations that i think are important so you've got the two panel trucks You've got two Blackhawks uh, loitering. You've got 160th SOAR, which is the Special Ops Air Reconnaissance. One Apache with a three-barrel chain gun, 20 millimeters, and that was kind of hovering overhead. 
watching the entire operation. Now, go to the next slide here. This is a front view showing you the two spheres, left and right, and then the one in the back. Now, in the front bottom, that's the consistency of what this thing actually looks like. So think of a terracotta roof. Think of the striations on a pumpkin or a, a seashell. That's what this thing looked like. And one of these popped out when this thing augured in. I'm going to go to the next one. Here's Mark's drawing. I was, I was with Mark years ago when he drew this freehand right next to me. It was, it was a religious experience. Absolutely incredible. So this thing was about two feet in diameter. It was free floating. The best assessment that we can make is that this contained a liquid mercury vortex engine and they were pressurizing it to high PSI and rotating it many thousands of RPM. And this is a resultant uh, gravity disruption that we've heard before as well. But this is what these uh, spheres look like. It was just incredible to watch Mark draw this freehand. I mean, there, there's no one that could do this like Mark could. Uh, this is a detailed view of these prongs that capture these spheres for free floating. Again, these were free floating. Check back here. Colin Richardson, hi from Dubai. Thank you. Uh, Sonia, good to be with you. Dustin, great. The moons of Jupiter. Uh, thanks again for being with me. Let's continue on here. Okay, so again, just to give you an idea of what the outer exterior consistency of these spheres look like. Free floating two foot diameter white spheres, outer appearance of a pumpkin, scallop shell, or terracotta roof. So, I really want to drive this home to give you an idea of what the outer skin of this sphere looked like here. Let's continue on. Now, here's Rudy's drawing, Rudy Gardea. He gets credit for doing the drawing. So, you look on the upper left, you've got the pine tree that they clipped, okay? Pilot and co pilot. We've got this F 117 canopy pick, tipped up with the sawtooth frame, and then when they crashed, the back of the craft actually was pushed up and there was a hole breach on the end of the craft, a huge crack, crack there, and there was composite material, fiber optics, composite material. There was a fine metal uh, grade mesh that was in there, and you know there were pieces of composite material and fractured sections kind of laying around the ground. You have military personnel. You've got the CH-53 with the aluminum uh, case retrieving the sphere. And then off to the left here, you've got one of the panel trucks. So in a nutshell, that's the scene that we're looking about. And, and I don't think anyone's talked about this. This is one of our Reagan administration silver bullets, uh, our trump card technology, our ace in the hole technology. They don't talk about this. They're not going to dislodge this one. These are the crown jewels, what we're talking about here. All right, here it is in flight. This is Joseph Wraith's very good full color rendering here. Let's continue on here. All right, now this is an illustration by Joel Payne. Want to give him credit. We've encapsulated all the elements here. We've got the military personnel. We've got the hull breach. He's even got the golden sections of the particles within the canopy windows to reduce the radar cross signature. Uh, we've got the ball off to the front left of the illustration. We've got the panel truck. We've got the CH-53 retrieving everything. All the components are within this illustration. Let's continue on. Now, this is the top view looking down. This is by Joseph Wraith. want to give him credit. And you can see it had augered in. Off to the left, you see the pine tree that was clipped. And you can see the trailing debris and the crash site. Uh, John Grubb, great to be with you. The moons of Jupiter, great to be with you. Let's go on here. Now you can see the CH-53 in the foreground in the bottom. You can kind of see the craft here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And now this whole scene is coming into view. You've got the canopy tipped up, pilot and co-pilot retrieved. You've got the aft end tipped up at a 45 degree angle with all the composite material that was fractured and broken away. Let's continue on here. Now we're zooming in here. If you look on the aft end of the craft, you can see this sphere with the clasps at the, at the uh, section where it's holding it. Military personnel. This was a super secret classified program. You're not going to hear about this probably from any other source. So again, want to give credit to Mark. And, but look at the hull breach on the aft end of the craft. You can kind of see these 
fiber optic composite panel debris broken and shattered near this fracture here. Uh, this is an aft end. Again, you can see uh, the hull breach on the side of the craft. We've got the clasp. We've got the canopy tipped up. And this is like very accurate, the best we could do based on the original witness that Mark personally interviewed. I'm going to go to the next slide here. Top view looking down. And you can kind of see, yeah, it, it looks a lot like the F-117, like the similar flat plate, flat setted technology. That's what we're seeing here. Uh, again, we've got the canopy tipped up. And if you look on the right upper section, you can kind of see these fiber optics that are probably the liaison between the spheres and the flight controls within the cockpit section where the pilot and co-pilot are sitting. I'm going to go to the next slide. Okay, so here's one of these aluminum cases. Uh, we've got the military personnel. I'm going to check back in here. Uh, ME, thank you. Hi, uh, Hyrenus, good to be with you. The moons of Jupiter, thanks again. So just take a look at how smooth this thing is. And, you know, there, there's no visible means of propulsion here. There's no jets. There's no rockets. Uh, there's no ducted fans. This is something completely different here. This is one of those craft that, you know, we have, we want to give credit to our engineers because we have American ingenuity. Yes, but on the other side, I will not let the crash retrievals go away because there's just way too many of them. Our military sources are telling us that these crash retrievals are a fact. And, you know, that is the $64 million question. Has the technology that's been procured from the crash retrievals, has that been integrated into the stealth aircraft? I believe the answer is both. It's the ingenuity and the engineers and the crash retrieval reverse engineering technology. It looks like the answer is both. All right, now let's go another. This is almost eye level side view. This crack in the back of the, the vehicle is very clear. You can see they've begun the retrieval operation with one of these uh, aluminum cases, moving this sphere off the site. And again, when this whole thing was over, they didn't want anybody knowing what this technology was. So they burned this thing to the ground and you won't hear about this anywhere else. Okay, this is a really good uh, illustration by Joseph Wraith showing you how this thing augured in. Who knows how much something like this would have cost? Uh, we're talking could be 750 million per copy, could be a billion per copy, but it wasn't cheap. You can, you can be assured of that. A really good uh, illustration by Joseph Wraith here. I'm going to go to the next one and zoom in. Now you've got the best illustration that shows you what these scallop spheres look like. And we've got these clasps that are holding these in place, but they were still free floating. Again, could have been a, a modified liquid mercury plasma rotation engine pressurized to high PSI. Now you can see these fiber optics and some of the composite structure near where this thing cracked. But there's absolutely, there was a hole breach on the side of the craft as well. I'm going to check in here. Crypto Alchemist, great to be with you. Uh, Bobby McBride, great to be with you here. All right, now. This is kind of the ending section here showing you the fiber optics as a blow up here. But bottom line is we've got Kevlar, we've got composite aircraft construction. We've probably got radar absorbent material within these composite panels, just like on the F-117. So you wouldn't hear this thing coming. You wouldn't see this thing coming on, on radar if it was a, a nighttime mission. No one would ever know this thing is coming. So again, this is one of our ace in the hole trump card technology silver bullet aircraft here now again when this thing was all over and they uh we've got the ch-53 flying everything out i'm going to go to the next slide here give you a little bit more of a profile view of the helicopter evacuating the scene with this sphere inside the aluminum case here and i'm going to go to the next slide which shows you the type of mercedes 814 panel box truck that was used to retrieve the major composite components within this whole retrieval operation. They used two of these, according to Mark. That was via the primary eyewitness that Mark interviewed. And this is Joseph's drawing that shows you, illustration that shows you just aft of the river is where the panel trucks were. So they were able to get the components over to the, uh, to the panel trucks, and then they left the scene. So 
How this thing ended is they took multiple AN M14 incendiary grenades and they blew the whole thing up. They did not want anyone to know about any uh, remaining components or fractured debris from this retrieval operation. I'm going to check back here. Scrogue 77, Crypto Alchemist, great to be with you. So in a nutshell, that is the base forward flying triangle crash retrieval operation. This is May 1989. Uh, I want to thank you for being with me here, and I want to give credit to Mark McCandlish. I'm keeping his legacy alive. I am not going to let his memory die. And again, please like, share, and subscribe. And thank you very much for your attention.